live, live, live. We're live. Welcome, everybody, to the 8 o'clock show. Prime time, Tuesday night, traveling with Bruce. Travel trivia. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. What a day I've had today. So much fun, so much excitement, so much tragedy. Just a little of everything. Uh, just crazy times. Uh, welcome back. I'm just double checking my phone. Make sure. Yeah, I'm muted there. I'm all good. I'm not going to blow anything. In. How you guys doing? Welcome to the welcome to the second show. Uh, uh, yeah, on the first show today. Oh my goodness, uh, talking about the uh, Norwegian Sun cruise ship. Uh, what shenanigans? Uh, just it's just unbelievable. I'm mean, talking about deceiving uh, customers. Uh, Two thousand paying passengers on a cruise ship, thinking they're going on a. a dream vacation through the Panama Canal 15 day cruise from Miami to uh, to Los Angeles and uh, you know within this within 24 hours of being on that ship guess what a whole bunch of construction workers are on the decks wearing hazmat suits with uh, power equipment and uh, and uh, dangerous chemicals on board uh, just I mean you couldn't believe I, I you can't make this stuff up. Like this, this is this is unbelievable. This is like a Hollywood script. This is like a disaster movie waiting to happen. Uh, uh, passengers, apparently, some of the passengers on board uh, took photos with their uh, smartphones uh, of the chemicals um, sitting on the decks, uh, showing the the actual uh, warning labels that are on these chemicals. Um, you know, hazardous to uh, to the environment. Uh, do not expose anywhere near pregnant people, like pregnant women. Uh, could cause birth defects. Uh, uh, you know, bad, you know, burn your eyes, uh, fire hazard. Uh, I mean, it's just every every bad thing you can imagine. <laughs> Any bad thing you can imagine uh, was what these chemicals are made from. Uh, these 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 ingredients that they were using on the ship they uh, they were stripping the uh, decks with these power sanders and 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 then they had the uh, jackhammer type units going and uh, sanding machines and and uh, everything else and these workers were had breathing masks on and eye protector and hazmat suits so that the particles wouldn't you know interfere with their like existence and uh, the uh, Passengers in the bathing suits over here, uh, you know, lying by that so-called pool downwind from the thing. They're getting this dust coming over and falling down on them. And uh, people are saying, my drink has this stuff in it. There's stuff floating on top where my ice cubes are. That doesn't look like it's uh, pepper and salt from the bar. It looks like it's some kind of other topping, a mystery topping that's coming from the construction zone just over here with those jackhammers. You can hear those jack on this relaxing cruise. And uh, Apparently, the crew did everything they could to to make the passengers feel as you know comfortable as possible, deal with the situation. Uh, but the captain did ditka, butka. He did nada. He did nothing. He, the captain was uh, finally, uh, you know, he finally came to a meeting to meet the passengers and said that there was nothing he could do. It was a direct order from head office, and there's nothing he could do about. It. Sorry, just the captain's ship can't do anything about. It. And apparently, his English was less than uh, stellar. Hard, he was having he was ha he was hard to understand <laughs> so jesus i tell you man uh norwegian blew it big time uh they owe everyone an apology they owe everyone and, and they apparently made one yeah uh, they owe those passengers a uh probably a full refund uh but i would i would think a three quarter refund half refund at the very very least um these guys, uh, I I think they pulled a fast one on on two thousand innocent uh, victims. Uh, they just absolutely uh, disregarded their safety, disregarded their convenience, disregarded their entire vacation, treated them like uh, third world uh, third world uh, you know refugees that just uh, are on board this ship for a ride. And uh, as far as they're concerned, they got the money. They got their money up front. These passengers are patsies. Uh, I, I'm just, I just, I'm telling you, the folks at the car, car, Norwegian are coming off looking like jackasses. They really are. I hate to say it because I'd hate to be blacklisted from a Norwegian cruise. I uh, love the cruise line myself. Had a great time on a couple of cruises on Norwegian. Um, these people have a right to be mad, really mad. And they have a right to air their grievances and let the world know about it. 
and I'm going to help them do it because they deserve it. Um, you know, who do you believe, the uh, cruise line or the passenger? I believe the passenger uh, because the customer is always right. And in this case, the customer got screwed. And uh, this cruise line is offering a 25% credit on a future cruise. Uh, and it's equal to the amount that they paid for their cruise. So if they paid $1,000 to get a $250 credit, they paid you know, $1,500 to get a $375 credit on a future Norwegian cruise, and they have to use it within a year. Otherwise, it expires worthless. I think they should cut these folks a check, um, a serious check, and a long apology letter, and beg for their forgiveness, and hope to God that they come back. Uh, because uh, you got 2,000 people who are going to talk about you. Uh, you just think about that. Uh, they're going to tell 10 of their friends. That's 200,000. We're going to tell 10 of their friends, that's two, two, it's 20,000, 200,000, <laughs> who are going to tell 10 of their friends it's 2 million. And then there's the social media, and I'm on social media, hi. And they're on social media, the, the Twitter thing is happening, uh, Facebook is lighting up, Cruise Critic is lighting up. How can they do this? How can, how can uh, Norwegian Cruise Line be so stupid, such, so idiotic? to have a cruise going from Miami to uh, through the Panama Canal to Los Angeles with 2,000 paying passengers, a number of which have flown over from Europe, by the way, dream holiday of a lifetime, uh, and put them into a carcinogenic laden, poison laden uh, construction zone for 15 days, no escape. You can't, you can't get away from it. Uh, it's an enclosed container. Uh, they locked doors. Uh, and tied off access to muster stations in case of an emergency. And there were hazardous chemicals uh, on the decks of the ship all over the place. Uh, any kind of emergency at sea, you had a ticking time bomb right here that could have caused incalculable deaths. Uh, incalculable. Uh, there are children on board, seniors on board that uh, needed help to, to, would have needed help to get off and, uh, their regular muster station is roped off because of hazardous chemicals outside. What, what are you doing? What are, what are you thinking? How do you operate a cruise line? How do you operate a cruise ship at sea under these conditions? You talk about safety as your number one priority for your passengers. Number one, safety. Not here. This was uh, complete ignorance of the rules at sea. Uh, you probably breached all kinds of uh, nautical uh, uh nautical acts of uh, you know laws of the sea. I'm sure have been broken here. And they're offering a 25% discount on the, you know, sorry, here's a 25% credit on your next cruise, but you can only use it in a year. And then that's the end of it. That is an insult and a slap in the face. And every Norwegian cruise line passenger who's booked on a cruise going forward, I recommend right now, <laughs> you get your butts on the vacations to go.com and double check that the cruise you're booked on between now and two years from now, double check that the ship you're on Please, God, make sure it's not headed for dry dock because if you're on that cruise, that the one they, these folks were on, the ship that they didn't know, it was going to dry dock in Victoria, B.C. Uh, if you're on a ship that's heading to dry dock, it could happen to you too. They could be tearing that thing apart while you're on it, whether you like it or not. They don't care. They don't seem to care. And uh, they may start pulling out all kinds of chemicals and sanders and all kinds of stuff. You'll watch folks walking around in hazmat suits as you're taking your four-year-old to the play area up on the pool. Uh, this is this is wrong. This is this is absolutely wrong. Double check on top of that. Make sure the cruise you're on is also not the first or second cruise after dry dock, because after dry dock, cruise ships are never done on time. They're never completed. They're still finishing stuff up on board the ship after dry dock for the next week or two. <clears throat> there could be painters, sanders, uh, veneer people, all the final finishing touches, all those lac lacquers you know, that are painted on. That's all highly poisonous stuff. There could be dozens of these workers on board these cruise ships applying the finishing touches to the cruise, uh, to the ship itself, while you're on the first or second cruise after a dry dock situation so how do you know <clears throat> simple go to vacationsgo.com find the ship you're going to be on check every cruise before and after your cruise so if you're on a cruise in june make sure that the last three weeks prior to your cruise the ship had been at, at sea and at service 
and make sure that it like the week before it hadn't been off schedule for a month and then the, the cruise after yours make sure there's a cruise directly after yours uh whereas if you can't find a cruise after your cruise and there's a gap for like two weeks three weeks five weeks it's in dry dock it's heading to dry dock you're on the dry dock cruise you don't want to be on that cruise not what i saw today not what i've read not what i've heard not what i've seen you don't want any part of it it's just unbelievable that was my day today that was my day i had to make a video today about that it's not what i want to do but it's what i had to do uh because i feel i owe it to you that uh hey you coming to me for the latest cruise news that's the latest cruise news it's not good it's not good at all uh and then there's the disney news oh my goodness the disney cruise with the um the woman and her family and she's 25 weeks pregnant and they wouldn't let her on the ship because uh they cut it off at 24 weeks and she didn't know she didn't know and uh what are you going to do? Uh, Disney can't let her on the ship because their insurance won't let them do it. Oh, no. It's not like they don't want her business. They want her business. All 10 members of the family now couldn't go. I don't know how many thousands of dollars of money this was. Uh, you know, two grand a person is at $20,000. I don't know. Uh, they refunded everybody their money, which is unbelievable. I, I found that to be a pretty generous man maneuver by <laughs> Disney to do that. Because they could have said to her, you should have read the fine print on your contract or you should have checked with your travel agent because you're too pregnant. However, they refunded her her full money. But she still put up a stink about it. And uh, I guess there were words exchanged at the counter in the terminal. And um, one Disney employee called a supervisor. The supervisor contacted security. And uh, folks, <laughs> folks, if you want to know what security is like, at an international port of call in the United States of America, like a border crossing or a, a ship, the, the pier in uh, Miami or Fort Lauderdale or Port Canaveral, that's where the customs guys are, the, the Homeland Security kids, boys and girls. They're heavily armed people. They're very heavily up. They're protecting the homeland. Uh, that's the security uh, in a cruise terminal. Uh, very serious security, no screwing around. Uh, people started coming up with flap, flak jackets on and sidearms and ak uh what are those ak-47s <laughs> ar-15s whatever those things are uh military grade uh hardware uh just to kind of settle things down right now um i don't think disney would have preferred that but uh disney has no choice they go with the security that's there the security that's there homeland security and uh, these guys don't fool around, man. They don't fool around. So it's making the uh, the the social media. It's just lighting up on YouTube and everywhere else. Uh, pictures of these armed guards. And uh, just so you know, folks, if you're going on a cruise, uh, there won't be any troublemakers. Uh, it, you know, causing too much trouble because if you want to get on a, a ship safely <laughs> and depart port safely. Department of Homeland Security's got it covered for you. They got the goods. They got the hardware. They got the trained people to take care of things. There'll be no messing around. But don't be causing any problems in the terminal. Uh, you're going to be in for a rude awakening because they don't fool around at all. Uh, they're serious. Like an airport. Just like an airport. Just a serious. Unbelievable. What a day. What a day. Oh, my gosh. Let's see who's here. Um, the five o'clock show, like I said, we had a good time today, at least as good as can be expected. Uh, I've got trivia for you tonight. I did notice today, one last thing, I'll mention that there was a shooting at YouTube today at YouTube headquarters. I'm a YouTuber. Of course, we're concerned about that. I don't know anyone at YouTube personally because I'm just a guy out here in the boondocks doing my channel. But I'm, um, I'm saddened to hear that there was an incident there. But thankfully, it wasn't as bad as we thought it could have been with like a massive nonsense thing it seems to have been a personal issue between a couple of people and uh unfortunately uh shooter killed themselves i guess took their own life and uh others were wounded i don't know about their condition i'm hoping for the best for everybody but um yeah what a what a day unbelievable let's see who's here saying hi to me uh who's watching the show and who's ready for trivia who am i gonna stump tonight <laughs> jim thomas is here jim how are you, buddy? Round two, hi all, and thank you for your earlier contributions to my channel. Uh, Jim did a couple of super chats for me today, 
And thank you very much, sir. It's welcome to, great to have you back. Debbie Manuel is here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bruce, ready for some trivia. She's saying, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Uh, Richard Koromaski, Bruce, hopefully some good information on part two. <laughs> Debbie Manuel sending me a $5 super chat contribution. Thank you so much, Debbie. I really appreciate it. You're just, you're so nice to me. It's unbelievable. Uh, she's saying, do I win the earliest prize donation prize? <laughs> You know, I, I'm I'm wondering if you um, if you're one of the you you beat the you beat the record. I don't know because yesterday I had a, I had my first donation from the middle of the ocean. Uh, so was that Richard Lucas who sent me a couple bucks? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he was early too. But thank you, Debbie. Uh, whenever it comes, it comes. I just love it. Uh, any any super chats? I really appreciate it, folks. Uh, Jim Thomas, you have a shot at it. Uh, he's he's saying, Randy Lucas, hi Bruce and all. Just finished a wonderful captain's party for dinner. The beef tenderloin was to die for. Oh, man. I had a burger tonight. <laughs> I put cheese on it. So I had a cheeseburger. Beef medallion over there. Yeah, Rich, Randy's at sea, and he's loving it. It's awesome. Thank you, Randy, for coming back. Richard Kormaski, I think Bruce forgot. Um, Bruce forgot part. Oh, oh interesting. Now, you're asking me about some, hopefully some good information on part two. And then I think Bruce forgot. Now, what did I forget? What? Tell me, tell me. Uh, let's see, Richard, have fun, everyone. Good night. Oh, now he's, he's gone. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, Bob Hollis, hi, Bruce, and everyone. Back for round two. Cam Wilson, hey again, everybody. Mich Michelle Dory, hi again. Kathy Butler, good evening, all. Tammy Ray, hello again. Nina Frank from Sweden is here. The very At the, ver at the very least, a huge lawsuit is in order. Come on, folks, get together and sue the hell out of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'd be talking to some legal people and see if we can make life uncomfortable. I mean, that's ridiculous. Richard Koromaski, Bruce, if you read it, the captain of the sun, this was his first cruise with the, with Norwegian, and he just started working for them three days before. So he didn't know what the heck was going on. Oh, my goodness. You're kidding me. I didn't know that. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Third day on the job, first cruise. Oh, man. Well, they picked him out of central casting, didn't they? They picked him out of a lineup of guys who didn't know nada. He probably had the, he had the look of deer in the headlights. Just, oh, oh my gosh. Uh, that is incredible. Uh, that is unbelievable. They put those bastards at Norwegian, <laughs> those crafty sons of bitches, <laughs> they found a sap who didn't know what's going on and put him in there as captain and then had a wrecking crew brought in to rip the crap out of the top of that ship with the passengers there and he didn't know what to do. Oh my God. Unbelievable. That is just. I, I'm just speechless. I don't know what to say. I, if I don't talk, this, this channel goes quiet. I'll tell you, that is crazy. Richard, uh, Bruce, if you read it, the Kevin was the first group. Kathy Butler, the Disney uh, site stated the pregnancy rules. They didn't have to refund her. They were extra nice to them after they were rude and aggressive, in my opinion. Kathy, I'm with you. You're right on. I'm with you all the way on that. Uh, Debbie Emanuel, I watched post of the lady on the Disney cruise, and I thought she said that she brought a note from her doctor saying, okay, to cruise, and I think she did know pregnancy policy. Uh, doctor's note won't help you if it's a 24-week rule, I guess. Uh, wow. Eh? Uh, Richard, uh, please read uh, Cruise Critic for the information on the Sun Cruise. I'll have to do that. Unbelievable. Uh, good point, Debbie Kathy says. Peter Heckham, a good evening, Bruce. Back again. Welcome, Peter. Welcome back. Richard Kormaski, it appears the people who had problems berating on the Sun had a virus when they boarded, flew, and got an antibiotic and were okay. A ship came back into port. See Cruise Critic post. What does this say? Problems breathing. This, bre breathing. The, people had problems breathing on the sun they say they had a virus when they boarded and got an antibiotic and were okay as a ship came back into port sea cruise critic post okay peter heckema uh he's rebuilding my costco fund dollar 95 contribution to my super chat uh, pa peter thank you very much i really appreciate that too yeah i can always you can always rebuild that costco fund you bet you because it just has to keep i have to keep rebuilding that damn thing i keep eating can't help it uh kathy is saying if you have breathed in particular it's you may not exhibit lung systems for days or weeks. Even if you didn't get sick, you sure didn't get what you paid for. And I agree with that. That is ridiculous. Loves to travel. Do you really have Beatle records? Do I really have Beatle records? Oh, man. Loves to travel. You're all, I know you're a newbie. You're, you're kind of a newbie to my channel. <laughs> uh, yes, I have Beatle records. Uh, 
Uh, I have all the Beatle records. And um, uh, I did a video about my Beatle records. Uh, I, did a, I did a video about uh, Beatle records that were given to me uh, for a 13th birthday. And, and you got to see that video. You got to go to my channel, my home, my homepage, and you got to go down to uh, like a few months back where I did a, uh, I did a story about uh, getting Beatle records from my 13th birthday. Great. I think it's a great story. I, I love the video myself. No one's really watched it. I love the video. I love talking about that. But yeah, you got to check that out. <laughs> but oh yeah, I got Beatle records. <laughs> Richard Karmaski spoke with a doctor on a cruise and he said they put the time limit restriction on in case the child is born premature. They're not equipped to handle prematures away from land. Uh, are people stupid? See, there you go. And, and, and the thing is, if you know, if it's a premature baby, you got to have an incubator. You got to have that, you know, 24 seven ICU ward. And they don't have that on a cruise ship. Are you kidding me? They don't have that. Um, uh, <laughs> Kathy Butler. <laughs> I love this. Kathy Butler says, I remember when my niece asked me, what, what's an album? What's an album? I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I still get a kick out of uh, artists who say, oh, yeah, I'm dropping a new CD. Uh, the kids don't even know what the heck that is. What's a CD? Uh, no, you don't have music on discs. <laughs> oh, my my daughter, I love her to death. Uh, I remember when she was about 12 years old, and uh, I uh, I think she, she was 12 or 10. Oh, I know. I, I know. She, for several years, she was into CDs because when she was twelve, uh, that would be nineteen. That was like two thousand. That's the, the era of you know CDs, really. And um, I remember giving her uh, a birthday present. I gave her the top fifteen hits, like the top fifteen CDs according to the chart on her birthday. So I checked out, you know, what they were. I went to the record store, got all fifteen of the, you know, the top fifteen, handed her the whole batch. I said, "Here you go, happy birthday," and. Uh, uh, oh, she was happy, of course. She loved it. I mean, she's just over the moon. I've talked about it for many, many weeks and months afterwards, which, of course, is years in you know, ch children's time. <laughs> uh, but I remember uh, when she was like 13 or 14, she had one of these, uh, one of these portable carrying cases that uh, she bought for herself or someone gave her, and it could hold up to something like 60 CDs uh, in these plastic sleeves. Trick was that it would only hold the sleeves themselves. It wouldn't hold the cases that the sleeves came in. And I remember um, noticing one day, I didn't see it happen, but I noticed one day what she had done. She had taken her um, CD cases and she'd open them up and then she would take the CD and put it in her one of the sleeves. Then she would take the, the jacket out, you know, the album jacket, and she would rip it along the seam and she would only keep um, I believe she kept the front, like the cover, the front of the CD, uh, uh, you know, thing. And the rest she just threw away. And then she had a, you know, like 50, 60 empty CD cases, just clear, empty CD cases. And uh, she had all her CDs in this little holder. And uh, as long as she had them in the holder, it was always good. But as the years went by, she stopped listening to this music because it was her music from her 10-year, 12-year-old age, 13-year-old age, which became 18, 19. Didn't listen to that stuff anymore. And uh, we couldn't put it back into the CD holders anymore uh, the way it came from the store. So I found one day her holder and a whole bunch of these pieces of paper, these, these cardboard pieces, the fronts. And I lovingly put the fronts back on the cases and then put the CD inside the case to try to preserve the CD. But, of course, the rest of it is missing and thrown away and... In my case, with an album. Oh my gosh! Uh, you take an album. Take a look. Let, let me show you. Just one second. Uh, oh, I mean, look! Look at this. I mean, come on. It's 1965. That's 53 years old. Uh, I mean, you know, this is this is how this is what an album used to be like. You used to get photos in here, and uh, you know, and on the back you got you know you got another photo with all the crypt. I mean, you didn't throw this away. You didn't, you didn't throw any of this away. You kept this forever, and you always had your LP inside the uh, sleeve, unless it was on the record player, of course, which is behind me, which is right here. Uh, but I'll tell you, you see, see that name, Colleen, there? Yeah, Colleen, uh, they're mine now. Uh, you have to watch my video to understand why this says Colleen up here. Uh, 
Colleen didn't want these anymore. And so I, I, I yeah, but she had, she had it first, but, but excuse me. I just got to put the album back up. Right? Yeah, Colleen, Colleen, uh, Colleen didn't want them anymore because, uh, you know, they were just the Beatles and she'd moved on to other groups. Great video. You got to check it out. Check out my video on how I got these Beatle albums, especially you who loves to travel. You want to know what's going on. Uh, this is your chance. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Kathy uh, saying, yeah, album. Oh, my gosh. Love to travel. I have a few 45s, but the rest are CDs and cassette tapes. <laughs> yeah, I remember this whole rigmarole. Uh, tell you, I had al I've got LPs. I got them all. I've never thrown an LP away. I've got all my LPs from forever. Uh, then uh, when I turned into my, what was it, my 20s, started buying cassettes. Uh, then when I turned into my, what, 30s, I had to start buying CDs. Um, now I just don't buy anything. Because <laughs> with the music they make now, it's crap. I mean, come on. Let's, let's be honest. It's garbage. Uh, sorry, young kids. I, I know you love your guys and your girls. It's okay. It's okay. But then, you know, my parents said the same thing to me. They said, well, you know, we bought our albums in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, but the stuff you guys got is crap. <laughs> generation after generation of crap. That's all it is, folks. Uh, just wait 20 years. Everything you love today, younger kids will look at you and go, well, your stuff, it's crap. <laughs> uh, Maurice. Uh, Maurice is here. Um, I'm going on the MSC Seaside in June. Wish me luck. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Look, uh, uh, Maurice, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a prediction. Okay. First prediction I'm gonna make: if you behave yourself at the terminal when you board the ship, no one will show up with machine guns. First prediction: just, just be on your best behavior, and everybody with you, you'll be, you won't see anybody with machine guns. That's number one. Second prediction: <laughs> it's unlikely. You're going to be in the middle of a construction zone uh, where they're tearing the ship apart while you're lying there trying to get a suntan and getting covered in construction dust. Okay, that's my second prediction, um, and hopefully the third one will be by the time June rolls around, please, they've resolved most of these issues and they figured it out. They figured out what a North American cruiser wants on a cruise ship, and uh, all will be well. So I, I have I have very high hopes for you and your successful cruise. But I am waiting for a report from you. When you get back, you're going to tell us what happened on that ship. Because anyone who's been on any ship, I'm always looking for reports. How was it? How did it go? What happened? So, yes, you owe us one, please. Uh, Richard, have fun, Maurice. Uh, Kathy, good luck, Maurice. <laughs> we'll be very curious to hear how it goes. I hope it's the best cruise ever. Uh, Kathy, oh, Colleen has super regret now. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Emanuel, just uh, love just staring at the album covers while listening to the music. Dang, does that mean I'm old now? Yes, it means that you're mature. You're a mature person uh, like me. And uh, yeah, I used to just read the I used to read the albums uh, all the time. And I remember, you know, you used to get the stuff inside the albums. You used to get like the sleeve would be covered in print. You could read that for like an hour. You know? So the album would play 20 minutes on one side. You turn it over, play another 25. You could read the I'd read every word of it. Oh, I loved it. Yes, uh, we're old. Uh, Kathy, it was a big treat when you when they put the lyrics on the album or or an insert. See, that's what I'm saying. Leslie Lovelies, good luck, Maurice. I'm going on the MSC Seaside in December. Keep me posted. Yeah, you're going first, Maurice. You're going first. She's going second. Yeah, uh, you got to let us know how it goes, and we'll see what happens. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, how about some trivia today? Is anybody ready for some trivia? Uh, <laughs> we had enough bad news in one day. Oh, uh, my gosh. Uh, Maurice, uh, Bruce, would you ever do a group cruise in the future? Uh, yes, I will. I will be doing something like that. I'm looking to put together a, a meet and greet uh, cruise. The first one will be uh, kind of the late fall this year. Thinking more like uh, November-ish, maybe is uh, October. Well, I'll let you know when I know. I'll try to give you as much warning as I can, and uh, if you want to join, by all means. Or, you know, I'll be down in uh, you know whatever port the ship is going to be departing from, and let you all know I'm going to be down there. We'll do a meet and greet before the cruise, and then we'll do a meet and greet on board with everybody coming on board. Yes, I want to do that big time. I've got a few other things in the fire right now that I'm working on. I'll keep you guys posted as soon as I know more. Uh, Leslie Lovelies, yay, trivia. Uh, <laughs> so let's get started on trivia. Uh, let's see what I can bring up uh, today. I've got I've got three for you today. So uh, 
Let's have some fun here. Um, oh, by the way, I got my pen. I have to pick up my pen because I need my pen to scratch off the correct answers so I don't, you know, miss anything. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, I want to ask you guys uh, for the first one. Um, uh, let's see. Which one do I want to do first? Uh, Oh, okay, that's a good one. All right, here's here's one for you. All right, you ready? Uh, yeah, I think we're ready. Um, Bob Hollis, he he will do a meet and greet at a port where he can park his big ass RV. That's right, buddy. Where I can park my brand new big ass RV. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, you gotta check out my April first video. I did one on the first. You gotta check. It was on Sunday. You gotta check it out. But you gotta watch all of it. Okay, uh, first. The first quiz today, here's the uh, topic. Um, North American cities that have the highest foreign-born population living in it. Okay? Uh, to give you an idea, the number one city, 52% of the people living in this city have, are foreign-born. They're not Americans. They're from somewhere else. And I got, uh, how many have I got? I got 14 of them. And it's the North America. So uh, think North America now. All right, not just America, North America. 14 cities with the highest foreign-born population. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Orlando from Kathy Butler. She's going right for Orlando. And I'm going to tell you, nope, not in the top 14. Sorry, uh, didn't work it out there. Uh, Los Angeles from T Jim Thomas. Los Angeles, that's the fourth largest. 36% of the folks in Los Angeles are foreign born 36 percent think about how many latinos are in la 36 percent is the foreign born population now this includes chinese japanese people canadians brits uh germans french i'm we're talking foreign born okay ah leslie lovelies new york city uh new york city is the fifth largest uh 34 percent not quite as many as la and uh richard's richard guest la right oh, we got it uh kathy butler is coming at me with Miami. Number one, Miami. 52% of the people living in Miami were not born in the United States. How about that? 52%. Uh, Kathy Butler is asking and uh, guessing San Antonio. And I, I would guess San Antonio because, you know, it's so close to the border. But nope. San Antonio is not in the top 14, believe it or not. Um Bob Hollis, Los Angeles. We got we got L.A. Uh, Debbie went with, went with L.A. Jim Thomas went with New York. We got him. We got him. Kathy Butler, San Francisco. Yes, number six, San Francisco. 32% of the population of San Francisco is not born in the United States. Tammy Ray, I think you should sell your house and go on the road in an RV. What a brilliant idea that is. What a – wow. Where did – boy, where did you come up with that? How did you figure that? That is a great idea. You know, if I could just – Find the right person that somehow would want to buy this house badly enough. Lock, stock, and barrel. I mean everything. Uh, I could get rid of all the furniture in one shot. Only have to have a small little yard sale for the other stuff. Put some heirlooms in storage and get myself behind the wheel of an RV and I'd be cruising, baby. And Bruce and Jennifer would hit the road and we'll drive to cruise ports, getting on cruise ships. Oh, and our house is waiting for us. As soon as you get off the ship, the house is right there. It's on wheels, ready to go to the next. Oh, man, that would be so great. <sighs> Tammy, I love you. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. I'm going to really keep that in mind. Randy Lucas, Dearborn, Michigan, or nothing. Uh, nope. Dearborn didn't make the cut. Now, may, you know, maybe it's good, but it's no, didn't make it on this list. Uh, Debbie is New York City. Uh, we got that already. Bob Hollis, New York City. We got that already. Kathy Butler, Quebec. City in Quebec, Canada. Quebec, 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 Karong, Karong, Karong. No, sorry, not there. Richard Kormaski, Silicon Valley as a whole. <laughs> I just love Richard. He just, you know, why don't we just say Silicon Valley? All the cities, every one of them, just the whole damn thing. Sorry, got to be more specific. Uh, San Francisco from Debbie, we got it. Uh, Richard Kormaski. San Diego, is that on the list? Uh, yeah, number eight. San Diego, 22%, and it's on the border. 
only 22%, right on the border. You'd think it'd be overrun with foreign nationals. It's not. There's only 22%. Isn't that funny how some politicians really think that San Diego is completely overrun with, you know, who's wrong? No, only 22%. Bob Hollis, Miami. We got Miami. A sea, a sea keeper, a sea, a sea lid. Uh, Montreal. He's throwing me Montreal. You're right. Yeah, Montreal's on the list. Uh, number 10 at 20%. 20% of the folks living in Montreal are not born in Canada. They're foreign nationals. Isn't that something? Could be all Americans for all I know. Darn Americans keep sneaking up over our border all the time. We've got to, we got to put up a wall. I mean, geez, these Americans keep coming in. It's unbelievable. They want the poutine. They're going for the poutine. <laughs> Nina Frank, um, Minneapolis. Well, let's take a look at the, the list. No, no, Minneapolis is not on the uh, not on the list. Ah, Debbie Emanuel, Oahu. How about that? Oahu. Nope. Oahu is not on the list either. Uh, Tammy Ray is throwing me Vancouver. Now there's an interesting city. Number three, Vancouver. 39%. Yeah, Vancouver. Lots of folks who are not born in Canada living in Vancouver. Yeah. A lot of folks from uh, China, Hong Kong, basically. Uh, Vietnam. Yep. Lots. Uh, America. Tons of Americans living in Vancouver. Tons. Fantastic. Leslie Lovelies, Chicago. She's saying Chicago. Uh, yeah, number 13, second from the last. 17% of the folks living in Chicago are not born in the United States of America. How about that? Chicago, very good. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew from Thunder Bay. Hi, everybody. Hi, doing Iskew. The question is, the top 14 cities in North America that have the highest foreign-born population, here are the correct answers so far. We have 14 guesses, 14 correct answers. These are guessed correctly. Miami, number one. Vancouver, number three. Los Angeles, number four. New York was number five. San Francisco was number six. San Diego, number eight. Montreal, number 10. And Chicago was 13. We're still looking for one, two, three, four, five, six more answers. And let's see, Tampa from Kathy Butler. Tampa from Kathy Butler. Nope, can't Tampa. I can't say it's on the list. Leslie Lovelies is thinking about Philadelphia. Philadelphia, nope, not on the list. Uh, Richard Koromaski as uh, Vancouver. We've already got it. Tam, Tammy Ray, I honestly would like to do that eventually. I'd like to do that eventually. Uh, oh, uh, drive with an RV. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Kathy Butler, Toronto. She's saying, for, yes, number two. 45% of the people in greater Toronto, that's a city of, what is that? Six million are not born in Canada. 45%, second most in all of North America by percentage terms. 45%. Amazing. Seattle from Kathy Butler. Kathy's on a roll. She's just hitting everyone, going after one, but it's not, it's not there. You'd think it would be because it's right by Vancouver. But nope, nope. The, they're head, the foreigners are heading to Vancouver, not Seattle. In the percentage terms. I'm sure there are foreigners living in Seattle, but not more than 17% to make the list. Okay. It's a nice place, Seattle. It's a great place. Uh, Leslie Lovelies, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Fix you think, you know, it's New Mexico, right? Nope, not on the list, but I bet you there are a few there, a few foreigners there, but nope, not enough to make this great. Uh, a seakeeper uh, uh, is at Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. No, sir, uh, neither of those cities made the list, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, however you want to look at it. <laughs> Leslie Lovelies, Victoria, British Columbia. Victoria, British Columbia. Beautiful city. Uh, nope. It's one of the oldest cities in Canada. Did you know that? Victoria was founded before Vancouver was. Uh, Vic Vancouver Island was inhabited before the mainland in British Columbia. Yeah. Quite an amazing uh, tale. And Victoria has always been the capital of British Columbia from day one. The capital of British Columbia. Uh, let's see uh, who we have here. Oh, uh, Richard Kormaski. Porta, Port, Puerto Vallarta. Puerta. Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not on the list uh, either. Uh, Tammy Ray, Seattle, we guessed that. No good. Uh, Kathy Butler, our film business is going up to Canada. Uh, a lot of it is. Uh, Canadian dollar, you know, 76 cents against the American. Big buying power up here for the American uh, Hollywood market. Iskew Park, Las Vegas? Question mark? Las Vegas? 
Uh, no, no, not Las Vegas. Uh, Jim Thomas, Sacramento. Um, you know, normally I'd say, I, I would say it's a good guess, but no, not on this list. No, a sea keeper, Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville. No, no, it's not Jacksonville. Not 17% or more. Um, Kathy Butler. Wow. 45% is so high. Yeah. Yeah. And Miami 52, Toronto 45 <clears throat> and Vancouver 39, Los Angeles 36. <laughs> Those are high numbers. Um, let's see here. Um, Kathy Butler is asking about Phoenix. Is Phoenix on the list? No, no, it's not. Not 17%. Not 17% or higher. Nina Frank, San Jose. Uh, San Jose did not make the list. No, no. You would have, you would have thought maybe, but no, didn't. Uh, Las Vegas from Tammy Ray. We already have Vegas. Uh, Tammy Ray is guessing the city of Texas. <laughs> the city of Texas in North America. I don't recall the city of Texas, Tammy. I know the state of Texas, but I don't know the city. Uh, St. Paul uh, from Richard Karmaski. St. Paul, no, no. I'm going to have to give you some hints, I think. Let me just take a look. We need one, two, three, four. We need five more, okay? One of them is from Texas. So that that Texas asking one city in Texas is still missing on this list. Uh, Boston from Leslie Lovelies. Uh, no, Boston is not uh, at least 17% inter inter international. Uh, Reno from Kathy Butler, Reno, Nevada. Uh, good guess, but no, not Reno. A lot of folks moved into Reno, but not from uh, out of the U.S., I guess. Kathy Butler, those high numbers can really sway elections. <laughs> well, a lot, of these, a lot of these folks from elsewhere, if they're not naturalized, they can't vote. But yeah, true. They could sway elections. Either way. Um, let's see here. Uh, Leslie Lovelies is going with the Providence, Rhode Island. No, no, I don't even have to look. It's not on there. No. Uh, again, there's one city from Texas that's on the list. Uh, and here we go. Uh, Leslie Lovelies is laughing out loud. Richard Kormaski is asking Houston. Jim Tom Thomas, Thomas is asking Houston. You're both correct. 20% of the population of Houston is not born in the United States of America. That was number nine. They were number nine on the list. Now, I have one, two, three. I have four left, okay? Here's a big hint for you guys. This is big, okay? None are in the United States. None of the remaining cities are American. So get out of America. New Orleans won't help you. Dallas won't help you. Are we done with California? You're done with California. Uh, Houston, Dover, Delaware, Phoenix, all those clues, no good. I need non-American cities to make the list. Yes, uh, Richard Kormaski, yes, you can vote in the U.S. without being a citizen. California does not ask for residency status. There you go. Richard Kormaski, uh, Mexico City. No. Mexico City doesn't make it. Jim Thomas thought that too. Tammy Ray is thinking Prince Edward Island. The city of Prince Edward Island is my choice for the city. The province of Prince Edward Island, I'm unfortunately, is what you're talking about. And uh, nope, uh, the province of PEI does not count in this guest. Uh, Leslie Lovelies going after my town of Calgary, where I've come from. That's right. Calgary is number seven on the list. 22% of Calgarians are not from Canada. They're from elsewhere. Cancun, Mexico, Kathy Butler, no. Creston, British Columbia, Canada, loves to travel. She's going for it. She's throwing it all in. Creston, no. <laughs> Sorry, no. Uh, Richard Kormaski, Panama? No, not Panama City. No, no. Richard Kormaski, Panama. Uh, Leslie Lovelies, the city of Newfoundland. <laughs> That's a that would be a hell of a town. Let me tell you, the city of Newfoundland would be something. But Newfoundland is also a province, like New York is a state and Pennsylvania is a state. New, New Newfoundland is a province of Canada. It does not going to help. Not going to work. Saint John Iskew Park is thinking Saint John. No, nope, no, nope, Saint John isn't there. We're looking for three more, and they're not in uh, the United States. Uh, I couldn't think of the city's name. <laughs> I can't think of the city, so I'm just giving you provinces, okay? Just help me out here. Give me a break. A sea keeper, Halifax. Uh, no, Halifax is not one of them. Hey, nice try. Uh, Leslie Lovey's laughing out loud. Thought that was pretty good. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, how can I? Uh, okay, one of these is a capital city. It's a capital city of a country. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Kormaski, Bel Mopin, Belize. No, sir, not Belize. Uh, four to five ain't bad. Well, yeah, Leslie, you know, you're, you're working on it. You know, you're, I hear you. Debbie Manuel, Amsterdam. 
That's what it is. It's Amsterdam in North America. <laughs> no. <laughs> Iskew Park is guessing Winnipeg, Manitoba. Correct. Winnipeg is the last one on the list. 14, 17% of the population. There's two cities left, both with 18% of their population not born in their country. Uh, Washington, D.C. from uh, Leslie's Lovelies. That's a really good guess. I like that guess, but it's not correct. It's a capital city. I'll give you that, but it's in America, and uh, we don't need any USA cities anymore. Uh, we we don't have any more. Uh, San Jose, Costa Rica, uh, good guess, capital city, but nope, nope, not working either. Uh, Seakeeper going with Ottawa, and you got it, buddy. Uh, Ottawa is number 12 on the list, 18%. Leaves us one city, and... Uh, uh, you folks have guessed this city once before in another cruise. Uh, it's uh, how do I how do I over a million population. Uh, let's see what else can I give you for hints. Uh, over a million people. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> it's in Canada. Uh, give me. There's a big hint right there. We're talking about a Canadian city here. Over a million people in Canada. Uh, Iskew Park, I lived in the Peg for seven years. Burton Cummings of the Guess Who lived only two blocks from me. Two blocks. You're that close to greatness. Unbelievable. Uh, Richard Kormaski, uh, uh, Cartagena, Colombia. No, no, uh, we're looking for a Canadian city now. Leslie Lovelies is going for the city of Saskatchewan. She's going for the whole province of Saskatchewan. She's throwing it all in there. It's not even in Saskatchewan, Leslie. It's not even in there. Uh, Nina Frank, Quebec, we've already had that guess. No, uh, Yukon Territory. She's now going for the Yukon Territory. <laughs> Gabby Ray got it. Edmonton, Alberta, 18% foreign residency. Uh, Calgary is 22. They're 180 miles apart. They hate each other. The, 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 the guess is the, the quiz is over. <laughs> Let me read you the winners. These are the cities with the highest foreign-born population. Uh, we're talking about Miami at 52%. Uh, Toronto at 45%, Vancouver at 39%, Los Angeles 36%, New York 34%, San Francisco 32% foreign born, Calgary 22 San Diego 22 Houston 20 Montreal 20 Edmonton 18%, Ottawa 18%, Chicago 17 and Winnipeg 17 Those are your North American uh, most foreign born nationals in these cities. Uh, Debbie St. Victoria, only place I've been to before. <laughs> Bigfoot City from Kathy Butler. Bigfoot City. I'm going to that one. All right. Well, that was the first one. We got two to go. Uh, let's see here what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to go with this one here. This one has uh, 12 answers to it. I'm going to guide you a little bit, uh, try to help you. Um, um, but here's the question, uh, trivia question number two. The world's largest airlines by fleet size. So these are the uh, the world's largest airlines by how many planes have they got? All right. So who's got the most planes for airlines? This is worldwide. This is not just the USA. Uh, let's see who we've got and let's see how we do. Twelve possible answers to this question. The world's largest airlines by fleet size. And uh, Leslie Lovely uh, threw in the first answer uh, saying American Airlines. Number two on the list. Uh, I don't have the number of planes. I didn't bother writing it down. Uh, Bob Hollis is going with Delta, and it's number one. Delta Northwest basically is number one. Kathy Butler, United, number four. Uh, TWA, Iskew Park is going for Trans World Airlines. They got a whole bunch of those jets parked in the desert down there. They're not going anywhere. No, 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 no Trans World Airlines. Days gone by. <laughs> Tammy Ray, American, we got it. Bob Hollis is guessing Korean Airlines. Uh, Korean is not in the top 12. No. Uh, Emirates. Kathy Butler is guessing Emirates. And no, they are not uh, in how many they have. They are not in the top 12 for numbers of jets. They might have the most 777s. They got the most A380s. But combine all their aircraft together, they don't make the top 12 for total number of aircraft in their fleet. Love to fly Emirates, though. I, I really would love to fly in Emirates. Sea Keeper, British Airways. Yes, sir. Number 12. Just made the list. It just made the list. Uh, Leslie Lovely's El Al. Uh, no, El Al is not on the list. Uh, Richard Kormaski is going for Federal Express. Uh, I'm going for passenger airlines, if I have to be a little more specific. 
Uh, it, it's possible the FedEx would make the top 12, but uh, passenger airlines, they don't. Um, Kathy Butler is guessing Virgin. Nope, Virgin does not make the list. Leslie Lovelies is guessing Virgin. Nope. Jim Thomas, British Airways, we got it. Iskew Park, Air Canada. No, Air Canada is not one of the world's 12 largest in numbers of jets. A Southwest from Leslie Lovelies. Southwest is on the list. Number three. So we got the first four. We've got Delta, American, Southwest, and United. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to have to, uh, um, I will I will fess up here a little bit because there's a couple on here that might be technically uh, screwed up, but it does, it's not going to affect the overall the overall cruise or, or quiz. Richard Kormaski, Alaska Airways, no. Uh, Leslie Lovelies, Qantas, uh, no. No, don't have enough planes to count. Southwest we have Air, U.S. Air Force, Kathy Butler, U.S. Air Force, no. <laughs> not military uh, aircraft, no, just domestic and international passenger airlines. <laughs> where, where you and I can get a ticket, you know. <laughs> Qantas, we got. FedEx doesn't count. Frontier, no. Air Canada, no. Spirit, no. China Airlines, uh, no. No, China Airlines, no. SAS, Scandinavian Airlines, no. KLM, KLM is on the list. I'm going to give you KLM because... Air France and KLM are one, and they are the sixth largest, and I'll, get, I'll go with that. Con Air, Richard Karmaski, Con Air, all those criminals, that's the one where, uh, you know, Nicolas Cage is going, how come I'm not in that movie? Well, you are in that movie, Nicolas Cage. You were in uh, Con Air. <laughs> uh, let's see. Leslie Lovelace, uh, Pan Am, before they went out of business, laugh out loud. <laughs> I don't think they would have had enough uh, – would have had enough planes to make the list. I uh, think British Airways, uh, I'm not sure how many for sure, but I'm thinking over 400 planes. Uh, it's huge, huge, huge. Uh, we need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six more guesses. But um, I'm going to say uh, there's one, there's only a few handful of majors that you may be able to guess. I'm going to probably have to give some of these up because uh, I have a feeling this list is a little old and there have been some mergers and I have a feeling a couple of these are part of something, but we'll get to it. Uh, no, that's it there. Uh, one of these is from Germany. Big hint there for you guys. Uh, let's see here. And the rest, um, okay, yeah, one of those from Germany. See if you can guess that airline. And of the rest, uh, U.S. Airways, Leslie Lovelies is going, yes, I'm giving you, it's on the list, but I believe didn't American take them over, but they were on their own, the seventh largest as it was. Lufthansa has come in, yes, with the Richard and uh, RD Khan. Very good. Uh, that is correct. Lufthansa is number 11. Thank you for that guess. Boeing from Randy. <laughs> Boeing Airlines. You know, all those passenger planes, those, those airlines called Boeing, Boeing Airlines. You know? yeah. um, Aeroflot and Japan Airlines, wrong and wrong again. Neither um, of the remainder, one is not from the United States. There are one, two, three, four left. Three American, one not American. Um, Air America. <laughs> Randy Lucas, Air America. No, um, uh, Lus, Lusfania. Iskew Park's going Lusfania. I think that's uh, Lufthansa, but you know, whatever. No, no worries. We got it. Leslie Lovelies, yes, yes. Richard Kormaski, Malaysia Air. No, no, not Malaysia. Uh, one of them is from China. I'm going to give you China. And China is its first name, but there's a second name. Uh, let's see. We should have airplane movie trivia. Uh, Nina Frank, Singapore Air. Nope. Good guess, but no. Uh, we have, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you another hint here in just a second. Uh, just see if anyone comes in with this China guess. Uh, China Air. Nope. It's not China Air. There's a couple that start with China, uh, but it's not China Air. Uh, let's see if anyone gets it. Um, two of the American airlines I'm thinking about don't operate jets. They operate turboprop planes, planes with propeller. The China Jade <laughs> from Iskew Park. The China Jade. Uh, no, no, no. Air Force One, Michelle saying. Air Force One. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Good guess. So, yeah, that'd be a great ride to go on. Hooters Air, Richard, I wait. I was been waiting for you all night. <laughs> Hooters Airlines. How long was it going to take Richard to come in with that one? 
China Eastern, no, no, guess another direction. Uh, Jet Blue, no, we're looking for planes with propellers. China Eastern is not right. China Air is not right. China Jade is not right. Bearskin Air, Bearskin Air, uh, no, no, not Bearskin Air. Uh, <laughs> Net Jets, uh, no, wasn't thinking of Net Jets on the fractional jet ownership. Allegiant, no, not Allegiant, no. Uh, we have China Eastern. We have Air China. I need some more directions. Directions, like a compass, you know. Direction. China International. Ooh. No, no, not international. China something, but it's not international. It's not China Eastern. So it could be China. Hmm. What could it be? Uh, how many other directions are there? I mean, if you go east and that's not the right direction, what other directions can you go uh, to guess the China airline we're trying to find? I mean, uh, how many are there? A China National. China National. <laughs> no. No, not China National. Um, <laughs> better walk if able. <laughs> <B -W> <laughs> better walk if able. Uh, China Western. Mm, not Western. China West. No, China Southern. Yes. China Southern is the eighth largest airline in the world. We got a China North. No. South China? <laughs> All right. We got three left. I think one of them has already been absorbed by, I don't know who took them over. Uh, I think United bought these guys. Who did United Airlines buy in the last couple of years? Does anyone know who United bought? Because they call themselves United now. They kind of use both names. And that's one of the three. The other two I'm looking for, again, all American Airlines. These are American-based. The other two are American Airlines that fly prop planes. Continental, Bob Hollis, thank you. Continental was number five. And United uh, bought Continental. It's, it's United Continental. So thank you very much. Air Canada, Kathy Butler, no. So two uh, air, uh, airlines left, both flying, flying prop. Both actually, uh, that's a good guess, United Express. Very good. Not right, but it's, it's really close. There are two more like that, that service the majors okay you, you if you've been on a, a couple of plane rides to get to a destination and you started in a small airport you got on this airline first then you got to a hub and then you got on the big airline with the jet and flew to where you were going these are the prop guys that finish the flight or start the flight for you if you're flying out of a small uh regional airport uh republic u.s airways no neither of those uh and uh, one of them is connected to, uh, well, they're both connected, I believe, to, the, to, to some of the biggest airlines in the United States. Uh, Southeast Air, no. Delta, no. Spirit Airlines, no. No, not Spirit Air. These are, those are jets. Um, the one that I'm thinking of has two names in it. The last name is Eagle. What's the first name? Something Eagle Airlines or something Eagle Air. Any ideas? Uh, WestJet? No. <laughs> no, no. It shows you how many planes these guys have, uh, even in props. They have so many, hundreds and hundreds of these things. Uh, American Eagle. Very good. That is number 10. There's one left. And uh, the second word is West. What's the first word? Something West. And uh, they, I think they feed, uh, they either feed Delta um, or they feed, uh, do they feed United maybe? I'm not sure. American Eagle we got, which is great. Everyone's guessing that one. Jet West. Nope. Nope. Something West. What is it? What is it? Uh, Richard got Jet West, but that's not it. Uh, something West. Anybody? Southwest again? No. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah. Look up, look up folks. What's up there? Way up, way up. Something west, way up. Reach for the famous movie line from Toy Story, Adam West. There it is, Batman Airlines. Uh, no, Northwest, no. America West, no. Sky West, thank you, Bob. All of us, Sky West it is. We, you got it, you've got it done. Uh, Sky West, it's coming in. Delta is number one. Um, American is number two, Southwest number three, United uh, number four, Continental five. Now, United Continental might now be the fourth, and Southwest might be number five. I don't know. Uh, number six, Air France, KLM combined. 
Number seven, uh, U.S. Airways, which is now part of American, I believe, which might make American number one, I'm not sure. Number eight, China Southern. Uh, Sky West is number nine. American Eagle is number 10. Uh, Lufthansa, number 11. And British Airways came in at number 12. All right. Those were the uh, those were the guests. Zenith West from Seakeeper. I love that one. <laughs> I stick at this one. I can't be sad. Delta American, just the worst to fly on. There you go. We all hate them. We all love them. And uh, what are you going to do? Okay, here's the last one. I'm saving the biggest one for last. This one has 20 answers to it. And uh, here's your question, folks. Uh, uh, you got to think internationally now, not just, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm forcing you to think internationally because no U.S. city is in the, is in the answer here, okay? <laughs> Please name the top foreign uh, cities that Americans fly to, U.S. passengers, the top foreign airports or cities that Americans fly to around the world, the top 20, all right? This could be from any airport in the United States, out of the United States, and we rank them from 1 to 20. What is the number one place? Let's see here. Uh, oh, no such pressure, Debbie is saying. <laughs> Richard Kormaski is, is uh, throwing in Rome as a, as a guest. Uh, and I'm going to take a look at Rome. Uh, no, Rome is not in the top 20, sir. Uh, London from Richard Kormaski. Yes, London is number one on the list. Um, and I'm just going to double check everything else is good here. Okay, continuing on. Uh, uh, double check, double check, double check. Yeah, okay, continuing on. R London, Rome. Okay, Paris. Randy Lucas is Paris. Yeah, the Paris is, uh, Paris is, where's Paris, Bruce? Where's Paris? I, I know it's on here. Uh, yeah, yeah, number five. Paris is number five. Uh, Tokyo with an I. Tokyo. Uh, yes, number two. Number two city for all Americans to fly to overseas is Tokyo. It's a long flight. It's amazing. Uh, Barcelona from Sonny Wallace. Hi, Sonny. How you doing? So, uh, let's see. Barcelona. Does it make our list here? No. I have flown from Barcelona to JFK nonstop. But it doesn't make the list. It's not in the top 20. It's up there, but it's not in the top 20. Uh, Nina Frank is guessing London. It is number one. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel is saying the city of France. Covering all my bases. We got Paris, but we can't go with France. Uh, Japan. Uh, Tammy Ray, I'm saying the city of Japan. Come on. No, can't do that, Tammy. That's the country. Bob Hollis, Frankfurt, Germany. Correct. Number four is Frankfurt, Germany. Richard Kormaski, Berlin is a question. I would have thought so. Problem is, Berlin has a small airport right now, and their massive, big international airport is mired in delays, delays, delays. It's 10 years behind schedule, billions over budget, which is a shock for Germany to be that screwed up. Uh, not ready yet, and so direct flights to Berlin are not yet available en masse, and so it doesn't make the top 20. Uh, a lot of people fly to Berlin from the United States, but they fly to London and then they connect or Amsterdam and they connect or Frankfurt or Paris and then they connect. Jim Thomas, Mexico City. Mexico City is number nine on the list. Very good. Paris, we have. London, we have. Nina, Paris, we've got. Seakeeper, Paris, we have. Leslie's, Paris, we've got. Loves to travel. Amsterdam is the guest. Correct. Number seven is Amsterdam. Uh, Taiwan, uh, from Tammy Ray. Taiwan, uh, first of all, is a country. It's not a city. There is a city in Taiwan that would work if you could figure it out. I know you're stumped. That's why you're guessing Taiwan. I'm going to throw it out there to the floor. What city in Taiwan are we thinking of? In the meantime, Kathy Butler went with Tokyo. We got it. Bob Hollis is talking about Brussels. I'm looking at Brussels and saying not in the top 20. Beijing from Kathy Butler. Beijing is not on the list of the top 20. Hong Kong from Kathy Butler. Uh, Hong Kong is uh, not on the top list at all. Not. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Leslie Lovelies. <laughs> Milan. Milan, Italy. Being a financial center, nope, <coughs> not direct flights. Uh, Tammy Ray, England. Just give me England. No, I'm not going to give you England. you got to give me cities. Uh, Richard Kormaski, Amsterdam, uh, been guessed, and it was correct. Um, 
<laughs> uh, let's see. There are, okay. Uh, Sylvia's here. Hi, Bruce. 76 degrees, Greensboro, North Carolina. Listen to your live show at 5 p.m. Couldn't give the weather then. Working home now from shopping for my cruise in about 23 days. Sylvia, fantastic. Welcome, Sylvia. Fantastic. Great to have you back here. Uh, the question is, the name of top foreign um, cities that Americans fly to. Uh, top foreign cities that Americans fly to out of the United States, nonstop, direct. Richard Karmaski, Sydney, Australia is a guess. Uh, not working the top 20. Sorry, Bob Hollis, Seoul, South Korea. Seoul is number 12, makes the, makes the cut. Absolutely. Barcelona from Sonny Wallace. Uh, no, Bar no, Sonny. Barcelona doesn't make the list. Not the top 20. Uh, Heidelberg, Germany. Leslie Lovelace. Heidelberg. No, not Heidelberg. Richard Kormaski, Moscow. How about Moscow? All those Americans can't wait to go to Moscow for that wonderful, crisp winter weather. No, sir. Uh, no way. Uh, Moscow is not in the top 20. Uh, Michael, uh, Bruce, not meaning to stop your game, but did you hear what is going on at YouTube? Yes. Yes. Uh, terrible news. Uh, sad story. Watched that earlier today and uh, just it's pathetic. It's sad. Yep. We're aware. Uh, Richard Kormaski, Beijing. Beijing. I mean, you'd think Beijing would be on the list, but you know what? No. Uh, I'm still waiting for the proper answer for Taiwan. Uh, what city in Taiwan would you fly to uh, if you were landing in Taiwan? If you're going to go to Taiwan, what city would you go to? Because it's on my list. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hong Kong from Richard. No. Sydney from Iskew. No. Beijing. No. Uh, sorry, Sonny. Uh, Kathy Wallace, Geneva. No, Geneva is not on the list. Mexico City, we've already got it. It was on the list. Brussels, not on the list. Shaipol, Shaipol, no, no. Um, now that is, uh, isn't that Jakarta? If I got my guess right there, uh, Jakarta is not on the list either. Cape Town, South Africa, no. Cape Town is not a top destination for Americans. Uh, Leslie Lovelies, Singapore. Guessing Singapore. Uh, no, Singapore is not on the list. Uh, Sydney, Australia, no. Stockholm, Sweden, not on the list. Uh, Milan, no. Rio de Janeiro from Sunny Wallace. Rio de Janeiro, no, not on the list. Uh, Mazatlan, no, no. Brussels, no. Toronto, Richard Kormaski, yes. Number three is Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Yes, uh, you can fly to Canada, you know. Uh, that's a foreign country. Taipei. Kathy Butler's got Taipei for me. That is the Taiwanese capital city, number 14 on the most traveled to cities of Americans out of the top 20. Very good. Uh, Taipei came in with Bob Hollis right behind it. Sri Lanka. Leslie Lovely, Sri Lanka. I don't think a plane could fly that far. San Juan, Puerto Rico from Joan, uh, Joe uh, Hoang. Uh, Joe. Uh, San Juan is like a third world country right now in Puerto Rico, but it is U.S. territory. <laughs> so not a foreign country. <laughs> it looks foreign. They may feel that they're foreigners in another land, but no, not on this list today. Sorry. Iskew Park, Singapore. No. Richard Kormaski, Panama City, Panama. Panama City, Panama. No. Uh, I'm double checking on my list. No. Bangkok, Randy, Lucas, Bangkok. Island, no, not on the list. Tammy Ray, I cannot think of any cities tonight, just countries or provinces. That's all I can do. That's all I'm coming up with. I got to come up with trivia for provinces and uh, countries for her. Kathy Butler, we need a geography refresher. Laugh out loud. J John B is here. How about uh, Copenhagen? Well, Copenhagen uh, doesn't work. Uh, Copenhagen might work, but even Copenhagen is not on the list. Uh, so, no, so John, didn't work. Uh, Michelle Lucas is going for Dubai. United Arab Emirates City of Dubai. And it is not a top 20 destination. Uh, but out of JFK, it would be in the top 10 uh, from JFK, but not from America as a whole, interestingly enough. And there are a lot of flights to Dubai from a lot of American cities by Emirates. But no, nope, that's not making the list. Uh, Athens, Greece, Leslie Lovelies, thinking Athens. That's a nice guess. But uh, no, not on the list at all. Uh, Michelle, did you hear what is going on at YouTube? Yes, yes, we do. We know. Uh, Venice, Italy, uh, Leslie Lovelies, Venice, no. 
Uh, Leslie Lovey, St. Petersburg, Russia. No, no. Taipei, we got it. Taipei, Joe, Joe, we got Taipei. Thank you. Leslie Lovely's Havana. No, not enough flights yet to Havana for, to make the list. Uh, Kathy's thinking Havana. Nina Frank, Stockholm? Stockholm, Sweden, maybe? No, Stockholm, Sweden is not on the list either. Um, Taiwan, uh, Thai, <laughs> Taiwan from Sylvia. Um, and then Tuai Yuan from Sunny and Taipei. We already have it. We've got it. Kathy Butler, Toronto, we got it. Debbie Manuel, don't think my globe is going to help me at this point. Kathy Butler, Calgary. How about Calgary, Alberta, Canada for a city that uh, makes the top 20? No, doesn't make the story to say. Leslie Lovelace, Montreal. How about Montreal? If you had Toronto, what about Montreal? Well, guess what? Montreal is on the list, number 11, another Canadian city. Um, Calgary, and then we have Vancouver from Tammy Ray. Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, yes, number eight is Vancouver. You know, all those Americans that live in Vancouver, it's uh, fine, Vancouver. Uh, how about that? Um, Richard Kormaski, Caracas, Venezuela, uh, no, Kathy Butler, Belize City, no, uh, Bob Hollis, Rio de Janeiro, but he just gave me the Rio. I'm um, looking at it, and uh, there's no Rio or Rio de Janeiro on my list. Acapulco from Leslie Lovely. That's a good guess. You know, no, not on the list. Not working. Uh, uh, Sylvia, when we play your games, we need an atlas. <laughs> laughing out loud. Uh, Kathy Butler, San Jose, Costa Rica. Nope. Jim Thomas, maybe a super chat answer. Laugh out loud. <laughs> a super chat answer. Uh, Kathy Butler, New Delhi. Uh, no, no. Dublin. How about Dublin, Bob Alice is going? Uh, Dublin. Uh, New Delhi, Dublin, neither, neither, nope, no go. Uh, let's see here, K Cairo, Cairo in Egypt, no, Madrid, Spain. I mean, that's a nice place. It is a nice place, but it doesn't cut it, cut it in the top 20. Uh, Dublin, no, Cairo, no, uh, Reykjavik, Iceland, a hey, Reykjavik, no, no, it doesn't cut it. Um, Cano, Dan, Lucas, Mexico. <laughs> Or how about, how about Cabo San Lucas? We could go with Cabo, Cabo San Lucas. We could try Cabo, Cabo San Lucas. But even that doesn't work. Nope, doesn't work no matter how I try to say it. Anchorage is in the United States, Sylvia. No, nope, can't help you there. Um, there's Cabo San Lucas. Rome, no. Florence, Italy, no. I think it's time to give you hints. <laughs> Let's see what I can do for you. None of these are in the United States. Okay, that's the first clue right there because, you know, it's a foreign country, foreign city. So you've done very well so far. I'm very proud of all of you for that. Uh, is Randy Lucas stupid auto spell? <laughs> damn auto correct. That damn auto correct. Uh, Acapulco, no, no. Uh, let's see. Um, let me just take a look here. Uh, I've got uh, I've got two cities from Mexico. Yeah, but Cabo San Lucas isn't one of them. We've already got Mexico City, so don't go there. Uh, Acapulco, we've guessed wrong, so we need two cities uh, in Mexico. Victoria, British Columbia, no, no, nice try, though. Jakarta, no. Istanbul, uh, no. Istanbul, not on the list either. Uh, Cartagena, Cartagena, Colombia, no. Richard Kormaski, Puerto Vallarta. Guessing about, he's asking about Puerto Vallarta. No, not on the list either. Cancun. And or Monterey. Uh, Cancun is on the list. Number six. Uh, Monterey is not on the list. That's a big city, too. It's not on the list. Uh, Cozumel. How about Cozumel? No, not Cozumel. Uh, <laughs> Sylvia, sorry, I didn't know the question. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The uh, This question is name the top foreign cities for U.S. passengers. Top foreign cities that U.S. passengers fly to nonstop. What is it? Uh, Cancun, no. Cozumel, no. Mazatlan, no. Guadalajara from Randy Lucas. You got it. Guadalajara, number 18 on the list. Okay, uh, let me read off the correct answers you have so far. Number one was London. Number two was Tokyo. Number three was Toronto. Number four was Paris. No, uh, or or uh, Paris. Uh, Frankfurt. Ca uh, Cancun, number six. Amsterdam. Vancouver, Mexico. Then we have Seoul, Taipei, Taiwan, Guadalajara. We still need one, two, three, four, five. 
Jerusalem, no. Uh, Alcopulco, no. We're done with Mexico. We've got the Mexican cities now. We're all done with Mexico. Uh, looking for a Japanese city other than Tokyo that uh, takes a lot of Americans in uh, on direct flights, obviously from the West Coast for the most part. Uh, Kyoto, no, not Kyoto. Uh, let's see if anyone else is guessing a Japanese city for me. Uh, and then I'll do, uh, let's see here. Uh, I need one city in the uh, in Osaka. Here we go. We've got Osaka. Thank you. There it is. Number 15 was Osaka. Came in with Richard and Peter almost bang, bang, just like that. Okay, so we've got Osaka, Japan. We've got Tokyo. Now, I need a city in the United Kingdom. In England, uh, we already got London, uh, but I need another city in England that uh, takes direct flights. And I'm just going to double check to make sure I didn't screw up. Uh, on an answer earlier while I wait for you guys to come in with that one. Let me just double check, triple check, quadruple check, and see, because I want to be sure I didn't screw this up. Don't want to make anybody mad, you know. We don't have that. We don't want to have that. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're okay. I think I haven't screwed this up. Yay, I haven't screwed it up. Yay. Okay, 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 okay. All right, let's go all the way to the top here. Uh, what are the latest guesses here? Manchester, very good, very good. Manchester is the answer. Thank you very much. That came in from Nina Frank and Bob Hollis. Uh, we had Okinawa come in here um, as well. Uh, Edinburgh and Great Britain. There's a city. Great Britain. Or Randy Lucas is saying Britain, you know. Uh, Leslie Lovely's laughing out loud. Tammy Ray, London, Manchester, and Scotland. Leslie's is saying, how about Scotland? There's a city. That's a town. Let me tell you, that's a town of towns. Okay. <laughs> We got a couple more to go. I need one, two, three, four. I need four more. Um, and let me just double check. One of them is in South America. One of the cities I'm looking for is in South America. The South American Bay. It's not Rio de Janeiro. Uh, we've had that guest a number of times. I'm looking for a city from South America, not Rio de Janeiro. <clears throat> See if you can pick it up. <clears throat> it's a big city. Big. Uh, Kuala Lumpur. How about Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia? No, 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 no. I don't think you could fly to Kuala Lumpur nonstop. I'm not sure if you can. I'm not sure if you can. Uh, Lima, Peru. Nice guess, but wrong. Sao Paulo is correct. Kathy and Peter nailed it. Sao Paulo, Brazil. That was my South American city. Lima, Peru, another good guess. All right, that's it for South America. Now I have one, two, three left. All three are in the Caribbean. All three cities in the Caribbean. Right, right out of Miami, out of Tampa, out of uh, Orlando, from New York, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston. You can fly nonstop to these cities all the time. What are the three? Caribbean cities I'm looking for to finish this quiz. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. This is my show. I'm getting tired. But we're almost there, and you guys are doing great. Aruba, no. Belize, no. St. Thomas, no. St. Thomas, no. St. Martin, no. Those are all territories, not cities, but it wouldn't have helped you anyway. Nassau. John B. is going with Nassau. That is correct. Nassau is one. Got two to go. Two to go. Not NASA, no, don't need NASA anymore. St. Thomas, no, it's not Saint, it's not on St. Martin, it's not on St. Thomas. So forget those guys. Oren Jasta, no, Newport, no, Georgetown, no. NASA, we have two to go. Uh, one is in Jamaica. One is in Jamaica. Phillipsburg, a good guess for uh St. Martin. Oco Rios, good guess, but nope, nope, somewhere else in Jamaica. They wrote a song about it. Uh, there's a popular song about this place in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. Um, and the other stop is not Jamaica. <laughs> on Grand Cayman? No, nope, not on Grand Cayman. Not Georgetown Grand Cayman? No. Nope. Montego Bay. Yes, it's Montego Bay in Jamaica. That's one. I have one left. This is number 20 on the list. Uh, it's um, on the same island as the country of Haiti. Same country that the island of Haiti is on. 
So obviously the island has two countries on it. One is Haiti. The other country is this place. And a lot of Americans fly here. A ton. A ton. Peter Heckham was thinking Kingston, Jamaica. Lord, we're out of King. We're out of Jamaica. Margaritaville, laughing out loud. Leslie's, thank you. Punta Cana. Nope. Not Punta Cana. Good guess, though. Cayman Islands. No, no, Leslie's. No, no, that's not it. We're looking for the country that shares the same island as Haiti. And, uh, well, Labadee is, you know, part of Haiti. But I'm looking for the country next door. Uh, there's a city there that Americans fly to all the time. All the time. Santo Domingo. We got it. Kathy has it. Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Uh, collect. Very good. I fly more than cruise there. Uh, I don't know if they fly more than cruise there. They might. It could, it could. There's a lot of vacation resorts in Santo in Dominican Republic. A lot of timeshares and a lot of Americans take in timeshares and uh, take in those all-inclusive resorts in the Dominican Republic. Very, very place. And a very nice place. Stable place. Uh, Peter Heckema, Santa Flamingo. <laughs> We're all done. Let me read off the uh, list of this cruise, uh, of this uh, quiz. Name the foreign, the top foreign cities that Americans fly to. Uh, and they are uh, London. Uh, we had two airports in London, Heathrow and Gatwick. Uh, I just called it one. Tokyo, Toronto, Frankfurt, Paris, Cancun, Amsterdam, Vancouver, Mexico, <clears throat> Montreal, Seoul, Nassau, Taipei, Taiwan, Osaka, Japan, Montego Bay in Jamaica, Manchester, Guadalajara, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. That was the uh, that was the uh, cruise, the, the quiz. You guys did very well. I think you did very well. That's not bad at all. Uh, awesome job as always, you guys. Well done. I got to say, uh, had a great day today with these two broadcasts. Uh, thank you for all the thumbs ups you guys gave me on my first one today. Thank you for any thumbs ups you're giving me on this one today. I love it. Uh, we, uh, we covered a bit of ground here. Um, it's a sad story in the YouTube headquarters today, uh, that hopefully we'll get all the details in the next day or two. What happened there? It sounds like a domestic situation, but it sure shook everybody up, didn't it? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you, it doesn't show you the future of what's going to happen uh, going forward. Uh, all businesses, all businesses with large campuses, uh, all these workplaces, they're going to be fortified. Um, can't trust people with guns and so you got to keep people with guns out so you got to fortify your surroundings and isn't it a crying shame that some of the most beautiful places uh uh in corporate america in uh, high schools churches uh public public places are going to have to become fortified as if you're in a war zone it's a sad sad state of affairs um it's too bad it's just too bad and uh what what can I say? Everyone can make their own rules, pass their own laws, and just live with them. Pass your laws, live with your laws. Uh, and uh, some of these tragic stories that are just too frequent for us, but becoming too too common, isn't it? It's, it's a bit too bad. Um, anyway, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> Jim Thomas, I might need a shower after the brain workout or at least a drink refill. Absolutely. I hear you there. Uh, thank you, you guys, for coming out. Uh, have a great evening, everyone. Tammy is saying, Bob Hollis, see you, Bruce. Good night, Debbie. Good night, Bruce and everyone. Can't wait for tomorrow. Randy Lucas, got to go. It's been a half an hour since I've eaten. Got to get back to the buffet, man. Let's go. Fantastic, Randy. Jim uh, Thomas, uh, night, Bruce. Um, uh, everyone else, uh, Jim Thomas, uh, good night. Night, note, note. Okay, uh, thank you all, everyone. Have a good evening. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thank you for joining me on my two live streams today, my 5 o'clock live stream my 8 o'clock primetime live stream. Tomorrow, Wednesday, April the 4th, I will be on at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Let's talk cruise ships and going on a cruise holiday and what's going on out there. Stay in touch, and thank you for the thumbs-ups and the comments. Appreciate everything, and uh, thank you for Super Chats as well. Really appreciate that tonight. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Take care, you guys, and we'll see you.